Our consigner um, was a lovely uh, couple from New Hampshire, which is just a state, a few states north of us. And she had purchased this, um, a group of frames from a thrift shop or antique shop called Savers, kind of a local chain of these type of shops. And she was going to use the frames in a craft project. Once she got the frames home, she started removing the pictures and posters that were in the frames and noticed that one of them was actually what she thought was a real painting. So she started researching it, saw the name of an artist up in the corner, which was the artist in C. Wyatt's signature, started researching the artist, started trying to locate maybe a local conservator who could help her determine if it was in fact a real painting, which it was, and then contacted a museum um, that holds the archive of the Wyeth families, um, a, a good group of their collection and their documental archive. Um, N.C. Wyeth was the uh, patriarch of a family of artists, notably his son, Andrew Wyeth, and his grandson, Jamie Wyeth, who's still living today. So very famous American artists. She then started, she realized what value it could have. And she thought it might not be the best idea to just keep it at her house without having it properly cared for. So started looking for a venue in which to sell it. So how much is known? How much do we know about, uh, about the painting? The artist, you say, is well known. What's special about this particular painting? So N.C. Wyeth was an illustrator for, um, he was, uh, his most active period was the first half of the 20th century. He provided illustrations for novels published by an American publishing company called Scribner's. His most famous um, illustrations were for Robinson Crusoe and Treasure Island. He also contributed to the Saturday Evening Post, which was a um, very popular periodical in the US in that period. So his illustrations were beloved for their action-packed scenes that really um, brought people into the stories and attracted them as covers to these novels. And this work was one of those illustrations that was provided for the republication of a novel by the um, writer Helen Hunt Jackson, a novel that had been written in the 1880s and was republished in the 1930s. And as I mentioned, this was the cover of that publication. He sent his paintings um, to be used as illustrations from his home in Pennsylvania by train to New York, to the publishing houses. And the frame this one, it, um, this illustration was in was really distinctive to the experts in the artist because mm -hmm. it was one of these particular, not decorative, very utilitarian frames that he used to protect the edges of the illustrations when he sent them to New York. So I wonder how this painting ended up in that Savers store. That's another story for another time, perhaps. But yeah. perhaps you can't tell us this, but who bought it? Um, I can't tell you who bought it. I can tell you that as a surprise to us, it was not an American. As I mentioned, this is a beloved American artist, but I don't think he is as appreciated outside of the US. All right. What was the reaction uh, of the couple who sold this picture and the, what, 295000 Australian dollars that they now have? Um, it, they were very excited and very happy with the results. I bet they were. And have you personally, Kathleen, been involved in something like this before? It is the art fairy tale, isn't it? It is. So, no, most usually when things are found at antique shops or um, at estate sales, the person who is finding it kind of knows what they have. They bought it because they think it might be a treasure. In this case, she was not buying it for what it was. She had no idea. So that is unusual.